In Nigeria, victims from Sunday's deadly church attack receive hospital treatment as survivors describing what took place. Worshippers say gunmen were both inside and outside the church during mass in an apparent coordinated attack, which included explosives. Dozens of people were killed and many others injured, including children. Those responsible have not yet been identified. And joining us now to discuss is Edward Clancy, Director of Outreach for Aid to the Church in Need in the United States. States. Ed, welcome. Good to see you. Uh, I understand the Diocese of Ondo has only confirmed about 38 people dead, uh, but news outlets have reported up to 50 people have died. Um, do you have any updates, and do you know how those injured are doing? No updates on the numbers. Uh, they, the diocese did ask that those who had privately taken the bodies of loved ones who had passed uh, to report it so that there was a correct calculation, but also so that the proper burials and funeral masses might be said, because they're concerned that there are going to be a lot of people without the, you know, the full funeral rite. I know the diocese uh, released a statement about the horrific attack, saying in part, quote, as a church, we are so grieved by this gruesome murder, and we condemn the evil met it on our brothers and sisters who have only come to worship God. It's quite disheartening and embarrassing that these unnecessary killings, kidnappings, and other atrocities are now done with impunity on a daily basis. Um, Ed, your thoughts on the diocese statement, and also can you talk about uh, what the diocese is doing for those um, who were attacked? Well, they, they, they are probably holding back a lot of, a lot of anger um, and trying to remain even keeled during this. And the diocese in Nigeria, unfortunately, has become very good at dealing with trauma in situations like this. Uh, it's the first time that it's happened in a place like Ondo and Owa, uh, that usually it's been happening up in north in Kaduna and further north, uh, where, you know, we've heard many, many cases of this happening. So the diocese right now is taking care of the families, visiting the sick and the, uh, the orphaned and the widowed and doing all of the, the first tier things that, that need to be done. But as Archbishop Kagama once said, they won't forget. They will continue to take care of these families for many years to come. So I think that's what's happening now and what will happen. Yeah, and what, what impact do you think uh, this will have on the faithful in Nigeria? They are amazingly resilient. I, I mean, we've met people from Madaguri up in the north and Sokoto, uh, places where it is really difficult to be Christians, and you can't move around freely. And yet, when you meet them and they talk about their faith, they're vibrant, they're happy, they're joyful, uh, and they're steadfast in their belief that they will overcome. And that's where, you know, they they really have a a, a drive that really is keeping them going, and that's a good thing uh, for both the church and them. Yeah, and this unfortunately is not, you know, the first type of incident against Christians in Nigeria. I'm wondering, though, what concerns you the most about this, Ed, and what we can do to help, if at all. I, I think one of the things, I mean, we as the two bodies, we as the Catholic faithful can pray and offer support because there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, people in need, families for trauma, et cetera. And I think also we should... Um, ask our leaders to change our, our, our strategy towards Nigeria. In 2021, at the beginning of 2021, um, Nigeria was removed from a country of particular concern. And for the church, Nigeria is a country of great concern. As you mentioned, this has come all too often, that about 3,500 Nigerian Christians are killed every year, every year for the past 15 years. It's not new. And the only thing that's new is the places where it happened. So I think what we need to do is we need to be very prayerfully aware of what's going on, to be a little bit outspoken, and to ask for our government, other governments, to make changes, to put pressure on the Buhari administration, because they don't seem either willing or capable of doing it. They, they've let this go on for years now, and it just gets worse. It's not getting any better. Well, Ed, thanks so much for taking the time to speak with us about this. We appreciate it. You're very welcome, and thank you. God bless.